Hello viewers and welcome to yet another Warhammer 40,000 Conquest commentated Octagon match. Today we're going to see Florian, Octagon user Living End, playing as Eldarath, up against T-Mind who is running the Dark Eldar Warlord Packmaster Kith. We can see both of our players' hands, of course, and in taking a look at our initial planet layout, it seems as though we could potentially have quite a quick game. Planet number one is going to be Farin, which allows for the routing of non-warlords. Planet 2 is Taurus, which rewards you for keeping your unit count low, which is definitely going to be favoring our Eldar player, given Packmaster Kith's predilection for generating Chimera tokens. Planet 3 is going to be Barless, discarding cards at random, which helps Packmaster Kith and her choking playstyle. Iridial removes damage from units. And fifth and final, we have Aatrox Prime number 1. In assessing both of our players' opening hands, our Eldar player Living End or Florian happens to have an Archon's Terror. He's got a Nullify, two very powerful events. He also has some economy units like Slith Mercenaries, Bealtan Guardians, but he also happens to have expensive units along the lines of Wild Rider Squadron, Starbane's Council, and then of course for our Dark Eldar player T-Mind, he happens to have Raid, he's got Promotion, Void Pirate, so a lot of uh, much lower value cards, uh, still plenty of command icons to go around, um, but definitely a little bit uh, less expensive in regard to cost curve. The initiative token does happen to be in T-Mine's hand, so Packmaster Kith's first play of the game happens to be our Great Devourer Unique, Solarite Avetis, played out to planet number one. It's a 2-4 attacker with flying, and every time it manages to incur attack damage, it ultimately uh, responds by dealing out damage to the enemy. So it's entirely possible that he'll win at this planet, be able to route units further along the line. Eldrath could certainly tap out the uh, one command icon Solarite when command at that location, but then that's definitely Definitely going to hurt Eldarath just because uh, if he's essentially forced to attack it, that'll deal damage to Eldarath. And even though uh, Iridial is on the board, he's not going to be able to beat the Solarite one on one. So, what exactly might we see from our Eldar player living end? We end up seeing a copy of Bealtan Guardians, and what planet is he ultimately going to choose to put this at? He ends up going for Aatrox Prime, which is going to be very valuable, especially if Kith plays hyper-aggressive with her Chimera tokens. Aatrox Prime could be a fantastic opportunity with which uh, Living End could blast Kith's HQ, kill off some of those tokens, damage the Warlord, damage units like Solarite Avetis, and of course, if it just so happens that he needs to route a target non-unique unit from planet number one, or wherever it happens to be, Archon's Terror is going to be an absolutely fantastic opportunity to do that. It looks like T-Mind ends up playing a raid as his action, so Eldar loses one resource, Dark Eldar gains one resource, and now we see Living End with five, and T-Mind with four. Uh, three of those resources actually are used to put out a copy of Starbane's Council at Taurus, and whether or not we'll end up seeing our Eldar player benefit from this effect. Uh, he's only got three units in play. He's rapidly running out of resources. Kith is almost certainly going to be generating a Chimera token once it's uh, her opportunity to commit to a planet. And then just in regard to units, Kith happens to have a lot of low-cost units, so it's going to be pretty easy for Kith to surpass Eldar uh, in regard to, you know, just battle prowess. And I think that uh, Eldarath is probably going to be able to keep his unit total particularly low just because he can rely on this Archon's Terror uh, being able to kind of compensate for some of the attack strength that he might lack. So we see a Kith's Chimera Masters put out to planet number two and that's going to generate a Chimera token so we immediately see the unit advantage shift into Packmaster Kith's favor, and we end up seeing a copy of the signature attachment mobility played out to Starbane's Council. So that's definitely a little bit of an interesting choice, uh, but it's going to allow the Council to potentially move over to planet number one or planet number three. Uh, if Eldarath ends up tapping Solarite Avetis, Eldarath could hit it for one, and then uh, if the Starbane's Council attacks for five, 
cut in half, rounded up, that also happens to be three. And in taking a look at uh, Packmaster Kith's hand, she's only got this one copy of promotion as shields at the moment. So presently, both players are tied at planet number two for command. Uh, Eldrath doesn't happen to have a foresight or anything along those lines in his hand with which to uh, win command at multiple planets. So I'm curious to see exactly how this is going to play out. And it looks as though Packmaster Kith is indeed going to be playing a very aggressive game indeed in putting a copy of the Warlock Destructor into play with the remainder of his resources uh, just so that if Solarite ends up routed, if Solarite ends up killed by Eldrath and the Starbane's Council, the Warlock Destructor is going to be able to respond very nicely in making sure that at least a little bit of damage gets dealt uh, in return there. So I'm curious to see where exactly our, our players are going to be committing. It's presently Living End's opportunity to play, and he quite wisely waits until the end of his deploy to do a copy of Slith Mercenaries. And where exactly is he going to be putting this planet? He ends up putting it at Barless, planet number three, so the Slith Mercenaries are a reasonable combatant, and that's going to allow him to generate two additional cards, dig for those copies of Foresight, and all sorts of other different effects like that. So going into command and going into combat, we've got a copy of Archon's Terror. We'll have a copy of Nullify, both of which are going to be absolutely just fantastic for Eldrath. All we've got for Packmaster Kith is this single of copy of Promotion, and we do actually end up seeing it played onto uh, Kith's Chimera Masters. So that's going to bounce up to three command icons, and unless Eldrath does something about it, that'll be one card, one resource for our Dark Eldar player. It looks like Living End has already decided where he's going to be sending his Warlord. Uh, certainly it's going to be tempting to send it to Taurus to try to ensure that a battle happens to take place there. Oh, it seems as though there was a small mistake, so promotion cannot actually be played. As Raid is a limited card and promotion is limited, uh, he's already reached his maximum there. So those two players are tied at command. Uh, Eldrath could very well go to Taurus to try to win uh, the battle at that planet. Kith could probably also go to Taurus to try to defend that planet. I'm very curious to see where our players are going to go. Aatrox Prime would also be another great option for Eldrath in not a command sense, but trying to uh, just potentially wound either of these units. So I can only imagine at this point, both of our players are going to want to try to get as many cards and resources as they can. Our players reveal their dials. It looks like Packmaster Kith ends up going to planet number one, pushing extremely aggressively, uh, going to be relying on that fair and battle ability to route a target non-warlord unit, and it seems as though uh, Barless is going to be the destination of Eldrath. So we're going to see planets, uh, battles rather, taking place at planet number one, planet number three, and in regard to command, it looks like Dark Eldar is going to be winning at planet number one, and then Eldar is only going to be winning at planet number three and planet number five so pretty paltry command phase income for both players zero cards two resources for t-mind packmaster kith three cards one resource for living end our eldar eldarath player we end up seeing at the beginning of the combat phase the starbane's council shifts away from taurus which is uh i suppose an interesting choice <laughs> but uh regardless of that mobility we end up seeing Farron opt to route starbane Council. So despite having mobility, it's going to be uh, committing alongside Eldrath during the following turn, only to arrive at that planet exhausted. And unless we happen to see something along the lines of the Aleatok Shrine drawn, then that's not going to be doing uh, our Eldar player any good at all. So uh, Eldrath happened to have two resources, which is plenty for his Archon's Terror. He happened to draw a copy of Gift of Isha, No Mercy, and Empower. Uh, typically, Empower is just for shields. No Mercy is kind of an interesting inclusion in there, but it would definitely allow this Starbane's Council to do out a tremendous amount of damage, uh, given that 
it essentially negates a shield card. So our headquarters phase comes and goes. It looks as though Packmaster Kith draws a copy of Slith Mercenaries and Siren Zithlex. That Siren is definitely going to help our Dark Eldar press that early game uh, aggressive advantage just because uh, if he keeps winning these material icons, he can win as early as Iridial. Uh, if Packmaster Kith takes Taurus and uh, Iridial, that's three red, and that'll be the game. Or if either player happens to take Taurus, Barless, and Iridial, that would be three green strong point, and uh, that would finish the game as well. But we end up seeing another copy of Starbane's Council and Slith Mercenaries drawn uh, for Eldorath. The random card discard ended up being a copy of Warlock Destructor from Packmaster Kith's hand because of that battle that took place at Barless. The initiative token now happens to be in our Eldorath's hand, and of course, uh, it seems as though Packmaster Kith did not opt to pay uh, the resource requirement to keep that Warlock Destructor in play. So our very first play of the deploy phase ends up being a copy of Slith Mercenaries by Florian Living End or Eldorath, the Eldar player, uh, to our new planet 5, which is going to be Elowith. It allows the tutoring of the top three cards of your deck for any one card. And how exactly is Packmaster Kith going to respond in kind? Living End has five resources, seven cards, whereas T-Mind has six resources and four cards. So plenty of resources for T-Mind to end up stealing either copy of these uh, Slith Mercenaries here. They eve they've each got two command. They're each sitting at a planet entirely uncontested, and between the two of them there are a grand total of four cards won during the command struggle on the line. So what are we going to be seeing from Kith? We actually see Kith opt to gain control of one of these Slith Mercenaries, so two resources down the drain. Uh, now T-Mind is down to four resources, but Living End, if he were to purchase that back, he'd be dropped down to uh, three. So I suppose we're getting closer to just a net zero resources ever so slowly, but how exactly is Florian going to be responding in kind? Eldorath puts out a copy of the Starbane's Council played out to Taurus. So interestingly, we've yet to see Siren Zithlex grace the table. Uh, I can only imagine that eventually she'll probably uh, be touching down on Iridial. We, of course, no longer have a planet in play with which to route units. Uh, certainly, Archon's Terror is not actually effective in removing Siren Zithlex, so that's going to be potentially just critical in allowing our Dark Eldar player to seal uh, uh, his victory condition. The initiative token is in the hands of the Eldar player, and much to the frustration of Eldrath, we actually see a copy of the Slith Mercenaries played out in opposition uh, at planet number four, in opposition of uh, Living End's Bealtan Guardians. So they're now suddenly tied for command at that planet, and where exactly are we going to be seeing Living End deploy more units? He's only got two resources left compared to T-Mine's three. Uh, he's got a lot of expensive units in hand, like that Wild Rider Squadron. He's got events that aren't necessarily doing much. Gift of Isha, he doesn't actually have anything in his discard pile. Archon's Terror is okay, uh, but it's kind of a shame to route something like a Chimera Master or a Chimera Token. Archon's Terror is not actually going to be able to route a unique unit like Solarite Avetis, but just a lot of nasty, daunting opposition for Eldorath. Uh, the Starbane's Council is going to be committing to a planet showing up exhausted, so it's got to be pretty difficult at the moment for him to decide what exactly can he do to try to pull through. He actually decides to invest in the Slith Mercenaries, so he spends his last two resources to pull it down. Uh, he's now down to zero resources. That'll potentially allow him to kind of dig for some cards, but T-Mind responds by using two of his own resources to once again gain control of these Slith Mercenaries. So Packmaster Kith is down to a single resource. Now we happen to see that copy of promotion put out at planet number four, affixed to that Slith Mercenaries. So now that Florian can no longer purchase one of these mercs uh, until the conclusion of the command phase, 
um, that's going to be a nice little victory, just a lot of cards, a lot of resources, so a very strong economic gain for both players. Both of these uh, players have chosen where exactly they'd like to send their warlords. I can only imagine Kith will be going to planet number one. Uh, Eldorath could certainly go to planet number one, trying to make most use of that No Mercy, uh, but in all actuality, we end up seeing Aatrox Prime, so I suppose that is no one's significant surprise. It's going to be great. Uh, Packmaster Kith goes to planet number two to force that uh, mandatory discard. Uh, pick up a strong point icon if the Starbane's Council doesn't end up being killed by these units here. Eldrath taps out that Slith Mercenaries at planet number four. Kith generates a Chimera token at planet number two. So it's going to be a command phase tie at planet number one. Dark Eldar victory at planet two. Eldar victory at four. And uh, Dark Eldar victory at five. So grand total of four cards, zero resources for Packmaster Kith. Looks like a promotion, Rogue Trader, Kith's Chimera Masters, and Hellion Gang. And then a uh, one card, one resource for for living end. It looks as though it was an Eldar survivalist with the order of his hand shifted around ever so slightly. And at the present moment, looks like we're going to be moving into the combat phase. And at the very onset, Starbane's Council uses its mobility to move to Iridial, which of course is going to be the victory condition for our Dark Eldar player. So a very nice block at the present moment. And of course, once we do end up getting down to Iridial, the initiative token will be in the hands of the Eldar player. So it's going to be nice nice to see is Eldorath tapping out a unit at Iridial and then the Starbane's Council potentially following through to destroy it with or without no mercy. But planet erupts at planet number one. The Starbane's Council destroys the Chimera token. Kith's Chimera Masters respond by tossing out a point of damage onto the Starbane's Council. The combat round concludes and are we going to end up seeing Kith's Chimera Masters retreat or not. He doesn't really have anything like an Archon's Terror to banish the Starbane's Council from that planet. If uh, it all came down to it, we could see that Archon's Terror played out just to remove that unit from Taurus so that our Eldar player could guarantee victory, but he need not bother, and of course instead of throwing away that Chimera Masters, we wisely do see it retreat. Uh, our Eldar player has far fewer units than does our Dark Eldar player. So he is going to be able to benefit from Taurus's battle ability. He ends up uh, drawing resources, and in just doing a real quick unit count, it looks like a grand total of five Eldar units in play relative to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there were eight Dark Eldar units, but a total of seven. So purchasing this Slith Mercenary, uh, had he not purchased it, T-Mine's unit count still would have been sufficiently high so as to trigger that battle ability. So we're we're now going to be seeing a battle take place at Taurus. It's going to be up to Packmaster Kith and this Chimera token. They've got the battle initiative. Are we going to see our Eldar player discard a shield card to preserve these Slith mercenaries? Let's see how it goes. The Chimera token has attacked. It's threatening too. We've certainly got a fair few different shield cards in our Eldar player's hand. He could make this Slith Mercenaries a little bit of a thorn in our Dark Eldar player's side, take down like a Chimera token or something like that. But seeing as how uh, Aatrox Prime is sitting right here, Maybe at some point he need not have bothered, but I suppose Living End allows that Slith Mercenaries to be outright destroyed by that uh, Chimera token. And with that, Kith bounces back to the HQ, and Living End ended up randomly discarding his copy of Archon's Terror. So if things weren't looking great, they're now starting to look a little bit grim, but battle takes place at Aatrox Prime. Our Eldrath player has initiative, the opposing Slith mercenaries were exhausted, so Bealtan Guardians inflict one point of damage. Eldrath is going to take a swing, and is he going to end up inflicting one point of damage? Yes, indeed he does. So the Slith mercs and associated promotion end up being destroyed. Uh, whether or not that promotion was just a lure to try to get Eldrath to that planet or not, uh, that promotion now is gone without having done anything beneficial at all. We end up seeing uh, Aatrox Prime fire at the Dark Eldar player's HQ, and Kith takes a point of damage, the Chimera Masters take a point of damage, and I'm just curious to see whether or not that's going to make much of an outcome as to the just uh, 
end result of this game. We end up seeing our final planet, our new fifth planet, and, you know, seventh last planet is Yavarn. Battle ability is each player puts a unit into play in their HQ. Both players generate four resource tokens, two cards. The initiative is now in the hands of Kith. We see an agonizer of Bren and another copy of Promotion in the hands of Kith, and now just an absolute glut of inexpensive and command-savvy units in Kith's hands. And uh, for Eldar, we ended up seeing Bealtan Guardians and Void Pirates. So a lot of different shields. We've still got that expensive Wild Rider Squadron. A lot of events that aren't necessarily making a tremendous bit of difference. And now it's all going to come down to, I think, preparing for our following round's attack. Uh, how exactly are we going to see Iridial contested? The initiative token is in the hands of Kith. What kind of action are we going to see? Living End has eight resources, eight cards. T-Mind has five resources, eight cards. We end up seeing that Siren Zithlex finally touch down on the table, but surprisingly at Barless. Kind of an interesting choice there. At the present moment, Packmaster Kith happens to have one material and no uh, strong point icons. Looks like Eldrath has one material, one strong point icon. So just in taking a moment to kind of reassess our victory condition, uh, Kith would now be able to win as early as Aatrox Prime, just because I suppose I wasn't expecting Eldrath to win. Uh, the battle of the first planet during last round's turn and uh, Florian living end could win the game as early as Iridial so I guess uh, we're just seeing that Siren Zithlex to try and block off our Eldar if at all possible and what's very kind of curious very kind of clever on part of Florian is by having this Wild Rider squadron interplay at planet number two uh, any units of course deployed to Barless are going to be uh, entering play exhausted but units like this mobile Starbane's Council are going to be able to shift over unexhausted and of course Wild Rider squadron can move in also unexhausted in order to attack. And then this Starbane's Council in Eldrath's HQ will have arrived exhausted in any case, and of course Eldrath can arrive and tap out probably Solarite of Vetus or whatever other kind of nasty units um, you know, Kith has that our Eldar player need worry about. We've got uh, an Empower, we've got Gift of Isha, we've got No Mercy, so tons of nasty different effects for our Eldar player, but I'm definitely curious how exactly this battle at Barless is going to break down. We end up seeing Kith put into play a Rogue Trader at planet number 5, and now I just remain curious, what exactly are we going to see? Will we end up seeing something like this Agonizer of Bren put onto Solarite of Vetus to just make her an absolute combat monster, make her a much more threatening target. It's definitely worth noting that she's got immunity to Archon's Terror, there's no Farron present to rout her, so there's just all kinds of nasty stuff to expect from the Eldar player, but can he try to overcome this Chimera Swarm? We end up seeing Bealtan Guardians put out to wear, and this is going to bring Living End down to three resources, whereas T-Mind only has one resource. So we could see him quite conveniently steal command of the Slith Mercs here at planet number four. Maybe we'll end up seeing the Bealtan Guardians put out to planet number five. But, uh, of course, there's this copy of Promotion. We do end up seeing the Bealtans touch down on planet number five. So will we see Promotion put out at planet number five uh, by Kith. We do end up seeing promotion put out exactly as expected onto that rogue trader. So that's gonna be a grand total of two resources for our pack master, but living end, he does drop his resource total by two, so I'm only assuming that he's going to be snagging control of this Slith Mercenaries here, which is going to generate him, and uh, maybe he changed his mind, actually. It seems as though he did change his mind. He ends up using one resource for a Void Pirate at uh, planet number five, and now he's going to match command uh, with our Dark Eldar player at that planet, depriving the opposition of uh, two resources. Now it's Kith's opportunity to deploy. Are we going to see a pass, or are we going to see... 
that last resource spent to put out this agonizer of Bren, definitely there's plenty of things along the lines of Archon's terror awaiting a kith yet to be drawn from the depths of her deck. So those resources are going to be pretty valuable in that sense. And uh, we do happen to see T-Mind pass. So now it's all up to our Eldar player. Is he going to try to conserve resources to play out some of these events? Or is he going to win control of the Slith Mercs just so that he can supplement his hand with as many shields and other cards as possible? So it's up to Florian at this point. But what do we see from the Eldar? We see a copy of the Eldar Survivalist interplay, and where exactly is this going to go? I suppose Aatrox Prime is a reasonable target, but Iridial is also a reasonable target. Really, anywhere that uh, he's essentially guaranteed to be winning command, or anywhere that he might want to try to lure uh, Packmaster Kith, is going to be an absolutely fantastic target for the Eldar Survivalist. But where are we going to see this seldom played Eldar economic unit? Looks like Florian is having a difficult time deciding. It looks like Florian actually changes his mind. I suppose a decent target would have been Yavarn, so he could have won that extra card, the extra resource, the Void Pirate. Uh, so we do not see a copy of the Eldar Survivalist. Is Florian going to purchase the Slith Mercenaries? Is he going to save his resources? After taking a moment to bemoan his lack of uh, appetitive or pleasant options we end up seeing the eldar survivalist once again grace the tabletop is it actually going to stick this time or is it going to be bouncing back to florian's hand okay so it ends up going to planet number four so it's not actually going to be able to win against this slith mercenaries that's kind of a, a curious choice i suppose uh, but in regard to where the players are going to be sending their warlords, it seems as though Packmaster Kith has planet number one nailed down fairly well, but, um, you know, the Wild Rider Squadron can shift over, the Starbane's Council can mobility over. It looks like Eldrath has selected where he's intending to go, so is he going to try to win the first planet to try and get that early game victory? Of course, if he happens to take quite a bit of damage... Uh, well, it looks like both of our players have ultimately chosen to go to planet number four. So, very interesting choice indeed. Eldorath ends up uh, exhausting the Slith mercenaries, I suppose, rather unsurprisingly. Kith shows up at that planet, of course, too, and generates a Chimera token. So now there's going to be quite a bit of battling to take place at planet number four and planet number one. T-Mind doesn't end up winning very much in regard to just uh, uh, economic victory. He ends up getting two cards, and then it seems as though he makes a a slight, slight mistake. At the very last planet, we uh, see a copy of Superiority put out. So for one resource, for one card, uh, Superiority would have negated the uh, command icons of that Bealtan Guardians, but we actually see Eldrath Exhaust to use uh, a nullify. So it seems as though Florian ended up winning five cards and two resources relative to the only two cards uh, for our Dark Eldar players. So a lot of army units seen uh, for Florian here. It looks like it was another copy of Archon's Terra, but uh, an Eldar Survivalist, Spirit Seer, Arathal, Warlock Destructor, and Slith Mercenary. And then for our uh, Dark Eldar player, it seems as though uh, the only thing I can tell that is new is maybe a Rogue Trader and maybe a copy of Chimera Masters. So... There's going to be a lot of events uh, going into combat here. Two resources, eight cards for Eldrath. Zero resources, six cards for uh, T-Mind. But it looks as though Barlas went entirely uncontested. The random card discarded happened to be a Warlock Destructor. Probably not the most... Uh, pleasant option. I'm sure this Eldar Survivalist would have uh, much better served Florian sitting atop his discard pile. Even though Gift of Isha can recur a Warlock Destructor, that's still, it probably would have been nice to have it fight in the first place prior to dying to kill off some of these uh, one hit point to attack Chimera tokens. But of course, battle occurs at uh, our 
current planet number four, Elowith. The initiative in the hands of Packmaster Kith, we see a Chimera take a swing at the Eldar survivalist, and we end up see uh, seeing Archon's terror discarded to prevent that kill. So what are we going to see? The Eldar Survivalist now takes its opportunity to swing itself. It doesn't really matter what it attacks. And now Packmaster Kith exhausts to take a swing at the Eldar Survivalist. With two resources, I can only imagine that T-Mind is assuming that there's a gift of Isha coming. And now the Eldar Survivalist ends up being killed, and that is now just a terrible, terrible option in regard to Gift of Isha. So uh, naturally, we see the Starbane's Council and Eldrath both retreat, so Elowith is going to allow Packmaster Kith to tutor the top three cards for deck, and that's going to allow her to add any one card of those three that she would like so she can find the absolute best. And it ends up being a copy of Archon's Terror. So at the present moment, things are looking very difficult for our Eldar player. I, our Chimera Swarm happens to be uh, at present counting at three. We end up seeing the Wild Rider Squadron shift from Iridial to Aatrox Prime. And just in taking another moment to assess uh, planet type icons, it looks as though the game could come down to Aatrox Prime uh, for either player if they happen to win Iridial. So if one player wins the next two planets, then we can see uh, the game won by them. But four resources, two cards for each player as we move into HQ. One of those cards our Eldar player drew was the Aleatok Shrine, which can allow this uh, copy of Starbane's Council in his HQ to ready after being committed to a planet alongside Eldrath. Uh, apart from that, just a Void Pirate in his hand, so not a lot of fantastic stuff, a lot of the same events, a lot of not terribly combat effective units, and then for Packmaster Kith, taking a look at her hand, it's just incredibly frightening. There's another copy of Siren Ziflex, two Archon Terrors, two Hellion Gangs that have flying, so they'd require an attack of uh, three or greater to kill them in a single swing, so just a ton of nasty stuff, a three shield icon card, a lot of really strong economy cards, and we see one of uh, Kith's resources go into this copy of Rogue Trader. So there's now four command icons for Kith at planet number four, and that's going to allow uh, both of these Rogue Traders to generate an additional resource, and it deprives... Uh, Florian of that additional card from the Void Pirate. But, of course, it now happens to be the deploy action of our Eldar player. We've got five total resources for Living End. What exactly are we going to see? A few different options here. There's Spirit Seer Aerithal, which we do actually end up seeing entering play to Iridial, and it's just going to be absolutely crucial that our Eldar player try to win as much command as possible. Spirit Seer normally isn't tremendously useful, but... If thanks to Empower, it can strip away damage from some units, it could still be pretty effective. It's a little bit of a shame that it's, uh, you know, uh, not wanting to be one of the first units to attack. I suppose like a Wild Rider Squadron could move over, attack. The Spirit Seer is almost guaranteed to be attacked itself first, so it's unlikely we'll see its reaction ability end up making much of a difference. But it's now once again Kith's turn to deploy. We see the copy of Agonizer of Bren, and it ends up being played out indeed on Solarite of Vetus. So an incredibly nasty unit, but just an incredibly threatening target uh, for our Eldar player to want to destroy. <laughs> Looks like Flor and throws out the LOL, and uh, I'm just curious to actually see how all this pans out. These two copies of Archon's Terror are going to be potentially just instrumental in allowing our Packmaster Kith to win the game here. But a Void Pirate splashes down on planet number four, Yavarn. Once again, both pl uh, players are tied for just command icons at that planet, but it of course happens to be our uh, Dark Eldar player's opportunity to play. He could do an Incubus Warrior to planet number four, and then win command that planet, but then Slith Mercs could, you know, go touch down there, and then once again steal uh, command equality, so 
it's just kind of a tricky bit of options for both players. We do see that Incubus Warrior played. It does end up going to planet number four, and is Florian going to be playing his copy of Slith Mercenaries? I can't see him wanting to give up command at that planet. I also can't see him wanting to send his warlord to that planet, and Kith definitely does not want to send her entire gigantic retinue to that planet. But the Slith Mercenaries touch down, so it's a grand total of six command icons versus six command icons, all fighting over that single resource. Two Void Pirates in opposition with two Rogue Traders. Battle of the Century going to be breaking out at uh, Yavarn, whether or not there's actually a combat taking place. But at the present moment, Florian is down to zero resources. Team Mind is down to zero resources. Neither of them happen to have any cards that they could play whatsoever, so it's going to be all up to committing. Is Kith going to be going to Iridial, or is Kith going to be going to Aatrox Prime? I'm very curious to see. I can only imagine that uh, this Starbane's Council with Eldrath, I don't frankly know if it's going to be going to planet number one or planet number two. It seems like it's probably definitely in our Eldar player's best interest to try and front load as much damage as possible to Iridial, just because if Iridial is one, it would just be potentially devastating to see uh, the... Packmaster Kith player benefit from stripping all that damage from a single unit, and I suppose Kith at the present moment is just hoping uh, for as much income as, as possible, but it's not looking like that is possible. I guess Kith is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place here in regard to earning resources during the command phase, because... Unless Kith goes to uh, Yavarn, then we're not going to see a, an adequate number of resources earned uh, with which to play either copy of Archon's Terror. And then for our Eldrath player, I'm pretty sure it looks like it's going to be one... Yeah, I guess... Okay, so Eldrath ends up going to planet number two, and to my great surprise, Kith ends up going to planet number four. So... Eldrath is going to win very handily that Aatrox Prime. It's going to be a hell of a lot of resources gained by Kith, uh, but not quite enough to have Archon's Terra make all the difference here. So we're definitely going to have to kind of readjust some of our victory conditions, but it seems as though Kith is going to win planet 3 and 4 for command, and Eldrath is going to be winning planet number 1 and planet number 2. So definitely not exactly what I was expecting to see, but two cards, three resources for Packmaster Kith. Looks like superiority packed to the homunculi and a uh, another Siren Zithlex. No, sorry. Looks like just the superiority and the Pact of the Homunculi, and then for uh, Florian, Starbane's Council, and Bealtan Guardians. So our first planet is going to potentially be one. It looks as though uh, mobility is used to move the Starbane's Council at the onset of combat uh, to Aatrox Prime, and now the only unit sitting at uh, the planet number one is the Spirit Seer Arithal. He can't be routed... Uh, this Archon's Terror can't actually affect non-unique units, and even if it could, uh, the Wild Rider Squadron could have conveniently shifted over as well. So very small mistake there, but essentially inconsequential. Um, so looks like Iridial is going to be won. The battle ability triggers. The Starbane's Council at planet number two ends up losing a damage token, and now we've got to reassess our victory condition. So... Currently, two red icons, two green and one blue, are in the possession of Florian, and if Florian manages to win Aatrox Prime, and it's looking like Kith has a hell of a lot of fantastic units sitting entirely useless at Yavarn, then Eldar is going to be able to win the game. Kith still needs two green or two red, so Kith would have to win uh, Aatrox Prime and Yavarn, or... I suppose that's the only way that Kith could presently win. Aatrox Prime is going to fire off at our soon-to-be planet number two, Elowith, and that's going to be potentially killing a Chimera token, potentially killing a Chimera Master, and then wounding a copy of Slith Mercenaries. So I'm very curious as to whether this sudden strange commitments to planet number four is going to end up costing our Dark Eldar player the game, so very curious choice indeed, but the Chimera and the Kith's Chimera Masters end up destroyed at planet number two, and uh, we're certainly going to have an interesting battle take place at this final uh, planet. 
Packmaster Kith will have the battle initiative as Eldrath bounces back to his HQ, so Kith has plenty of decent stuff to kill, like the Slith Mercs, the Beeltan Guardians, but unless he ends up getting lucky and drawing a copy of Chimera Den, I cannot see Kith very easily managing to win at Aatrox Prime. Even with both of these copies of Archon's Terror, it seems like that is just going to be really an uphill battle. Uh, surprisingly, perhaps, we end up seeing Kith invest two resources in stealing control of this Slith Mercenaries now that uh, Florian can't actually purchase it back. We see a copy of Chimera destroy Bealtan Guardians. The Void Pirates, of course, swing, but our Dark Eldar player has more than enough to end up destroying that stuff. So um, our Dark Eldar player is a, as a apart from just going through the paces, uh, Florian decides to take care of that for him. So Florian throws out, do we want to trigger Yavarn? Do we want to see units put into control at either player's HQ? It's definitely not in the best interests of our Dark Eldar player to do it. Uh, surprisingly, he does choose to do so. I suppose it's going to be... He tries to put a copy of Siren Ziflex into play, but there happens to already be a copy in play, so really his only choices here are the Hellion Gang and the Kith's Chimera Masters. Whereas our Eldar player is going to get a copy of Starbane's Council and have this Aleatok Shrine. Okay, so we do see T-Mine change his mind and decide very wisely not to trigger it. So I can't help but think that that Planet 4 Committance is probably going to cost him the game, but maybe he'll get lucky. Maybe he'll end up drawing his... Uh, his Chimera Den. It looks as though uh, T-Mind is saying he's had too few Kith games under his belt, but at the present moment we're right about to go into HQ. Kith returns to her headquarters, and let's see it. Yeah, Florian says you can still win just by drawing a, a Chimera Den, but let's see what exactly happens. Florian indicates he's done. T-Mind indicates he is also done. We're going to end up seeing our players draw some cards. Wild Rider Squadron moves to Elowith, which I suppose is fine. It can certainly move to planet number one if it needs to. It's uh, contributing a command icon in the meantime against our uh, uh, Slith mercenaries here. We end up seeing two cards, four resources for either player. I definitely caught an Archon's Terror for Florian. And then for our Eldar player, looks like a copy of Fortel and then perhaps Superiority. So Fortel is going to be doing absolutely nothing for him. He might end up playing a Pact of the Homunculi just to sacrifice a unit to try to benefit from potentially drawing a Chimera Den and his remaining 26 cards. But what exactly are we going to see? Kith has the initiative. There's going to be a hell of a lot of frightening Eldar units entering play at Aatrox Prime. Solarite Avetis is nowhere to be found. This, you know, Incubus Warrior is over here not attacking for three. Siren Zithlax is sitting here in play just by merit of her existing, preventing another Siren Zithlax from entering play. So, ah, we end up seeing Pact of the Homunculi used, but a Chimera is sacrificed. I can only assume you'd be di uh, digging for a Chimera Den, and if you were to do that, why would you want to get rid of a Chimera? So I think Zithlex would have been maybe a better choice. This Slith Mercenaries probably would have been the best choice, but what exactly are we going to see drawn? Florian happens to randomly discard a copy of the Warlock Destructor, and we end up seeing a copy of Pact of the Homunculi and a Rogue Trader drawn. So now it's a little bit tricky. There's definitely going to be three resources uh, gained by Packmaster Kith, unless Eldar uh, has their Warlord sent to Yavarn, so it's got to be kind of a, a little bit of a struggle here. Do we want to risk playing another Pact of the Homunculi just to potentially draw a Chimera Den? There are currently only going to be three Chimera in play as opposed to four, or do we just want to try and conserve resources to use Archon's Terror? It's kind of a difficult choice to make, but we see Florian put into play his copy of Starbane's Council to our present planet number one, the decisive battle of the game, quite likely, and it's uh, two resources for Florian, three resources for T-Mind, six cards for Eldar, eleven cards for Dark Eldar. So how are we going to see T-Mind respond? Are we going to see that Pact of the Homunculi or not? 
we actually see a rogue trader touchdown on Elowith. So that's going to be just, you know, potentially winning an additional resource. But if Florian happens to use his remaining two resources to purchase control of the Slith mercenaries, then he's going to conveniently deprive his uh, opponent's rogue trader of that bonus resource. So kind of an interesting choice for sure. But now once again, it's Florian's opportunity to play. We see a copy of the Bealtan Guardians end up going to planet number one. So I guess he's just trying to put as much uh, combat savvy units in play at that planet. I can only imagine that Eldrath might also be going to planet number one. Packmaster Kith. God, I mean... If you don't want to lose the game, you're probably going to have to commit to planet number one just to... But there's really not much that our Dark Eldar Warlord can do at this point, and it's his opportunity to deploy. Only two resources left. Florian doesn't have enough left to purchase a copy of the Slith Mercenaries. Will we see a Pact of the Homunculi? And the problem here is that even if we do see it, uh, Kith isn't going to have enough resources to actually put it into play. So are we going to see a unit, or are we going to see an Archon's Terror? Either way, it seems like Kith is just absolutely without a chance. So whether or not this was the Dark Eldar player's game at one point, it just seems like this committance to the last planet in all likelihood cost Kith the game. So we see two resources used to sack a unit. Uh, Pact of the Homunculi is played. We see yet another Chimera token destroyed. I can't actually think of what exactly our Dark Eldar player might be digging for at this point. Uh, we end up... I guess seeing Florian randomly discard a copy of Empower, we see a Superiority and a Clavex Warleader drawn for our Dark Eldar player, but neither of those are going to be doing any good for him at all. Uh, for Command, like let's say Yavarn ends up won by our Dark Eldar player, and that Elowith also ends up won by our Dark Eldar player, that four resources would be enough for one Clavex Warleader or both copies of Archon's Terror, and even though those are powerful effects, they're not nearly enough to destroy some of the Eldar opposition, especially considering this Wild Rider squadron can shift in. This is going to be three five attack attackers because the initiative token is in Kith's hands. Kith isn't going to retreat, Kith is going to be exhausted, and Kith is going to get annihilated. So... Uh, ever a troll, it seems as though Florian has picked planet number five, which is going to be, uh, Yavarn. So both players have chosen to commit their forces to Yavarn. Solarite of Vetus is exhausted. Uh, Eldarath is going to take a little bit of a, a punch before he can run away, or Spirit Seer Arathal is going to get hit. Uh, but of course we're not actually going to see a battle at that planet. So our Dark Eldar player wins planet 2 and planet number 3. Our Eldar player is going to end up winning planet number 1. So it's going to be two cards and four resources for T-Mind and one card, one resource for Florian. Looks like Florian drew, I believe, a Shadow Field. Or, sorry, T-Mind ended up drawing a uh, Shadow Field and I think a Warlock Destructor. And then it looks as though maybe a Starbane's Council for uh, Florian here. So... Going into the combat phase, we do see a Chimera token generated by Kith, but this is a whole lot of Dark Eldar units doing a whole hell of a lot of nothing. So four resources for T-Mind. It's enough for a Clavex Warleader, but there are no damaged Eldar units. There are two Archon's Terrors, but it's not going to make any difference at all. So I suppose, are we going to see anything used by our... Packmaster Kith player, or are we just going to see Aatrox Prime go entirely uncontested? All right, so it looks like we finally see the GG called out by Florian, so very well played on both of our players. As ever, thank you to T-Mind and Living End for both of them allowing me the great honor of recording their game today. It looks like T-Mind says the command lock was too much, uh, so there were some subtle misplays, I believe, on part of our Dark Eldar player. Uh, that erroneous commitments to the fourth final planet uh, definitely hurt quite a bit. 
I think is safe to say. And uh, T-Mind bemoans the difficulty of dealing with the versatility behind the Wild Rider Squadron, and of course that Starbane's Council, particularly the one with mobility. So a very interesting deck played by Florian, a lot of good play by both players, a lot of unfortunate random discards for Florian, but as ever, I'll just conclude this video by saying thank you once again for watching, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, you're encouraged to share this content, as the more views, the more likes, the more subscriptions these videos this channel receives, the more players watch interesting and uh, very curiously concluded games like this one, the more people we might inspire to actually give Conquest a try, and of course will serve always to expand our growing community. So thank you once again for watching. If you'd like some games of your own commentated, or you'd like to be featured in any kind of video, you're always welcome to get in touch with me through Twitter or through Facebook and give me ideas or let me know what you'd like to do. And of course, if at any point you feel so inclined to help me recur some of my file hosting or operating expenses, I'd be honored were you to visit my Patreon. But once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, be sure to check back in again soon for ever more Conquest LCG content to come.